Spike Jonze's sci-fi romance Her is one of my favorite films of all time. Its intuitive screenplay creates this euphoria in this melancholic story about love, connection, and relationships, rather than a love story. Joaquin Phoenix's performance as Theodore meshes very well with Rudy Mara's Catherine, Amy Adams' Amy, and Scarlett Johansson's Samantha, making every scene Theodore and each of their characters interact flow extremely well, to the point where it feels natural in its dialogue and pacing. But to me, the reason why it's highly regarded is because of its unique design and atmosphere. This is thanks to the eyes of both production designer K.K. Barrett and director of photography Hoyt Van Hoyma. In an interview with the Motion Picture Association, when asked about the film's naturally futuristic aura in its design, Barrett said, quote, I think sometimes when people think about the future, they get hung up on the things that will change rather than the things that will stay the same. When thinking about the future, people always think about technology and about what technology is rather than what the human experience with technology is. The blend of recognizable and unrecognizable design choices throughout the film creates this blend of discourse and comfort to the viewer. The more familiar we are with what is shown in front of us, the more feasible and realistic this kind of Los Angeles could be. Regarding the movie's uncluttered and minimalistic design, we took away things that were distracting. We took away the noisy signage, traffic, the things that surround us in our current world, and by taking those things away, we said, oh, now we're beginning to be in the future. And he's right. The association of minimalistic design has progressed dramatically in the past few years, from corporate logos to phones to vehicles and to just general architecture. And to complement the minimalistic visual design, Hoyt Van Hoyman responds with a reflection of that same archetype, with beautiful and evocative cinematography shot on digital cameras, giving both a flat picture with the phenomenal color grade, drawing more reds, oranges, and yellows that cooperate very well with the overall design of the film in general. In an interview with Uproxx, Hoyt Van Hoytma had said that he had zeroed in on a style reminiscent of Japanese photographer Rinko Kawauchi, whose work covers the more simplistic aspects of life, with a dreamy yet soft texture that harks back to a movie like Wong Kar Wai's Chunking Express. And when asked about the clear motivation to move warmer in a cold genre of science fiction, he said, Modern is often very sleek and very stark, but we didn't really want that. Part of that vision of the future was that modern should be very soulful and warm and tactile, and I guess that's the very reason we eliminated blue. But I don't want to make it sound like it was an intellectual reason. There was very much an intuitive drive behind it, and with it being filmed in Los Angeles and Shanghai, the blending of two architecturally different cities creates a very dense yet clean visual. Having a character like Theodore living in a dystopian interconnected society serves the atmosphere very well in portraying Theodore as just another isolated footnote in an ever-expanding story of the technological progression of the human connection in the future, or the regression of it. I think it was the idea we were trying to make this very warm, tactile world with, with the, the materials and the fabrics and the woods and, and cr create this, this, this world that felt like this utopic world that everything's nice and everything's comfortable. Yet even in this world where you're seemingly getting everything you need and having this nice life, there's still loneliness and longing and isolation and disconnection. And if I had to define what it, I'm picturing, it would be utopic. And that sort of started this, tr this train of thought, which was you know, sort of where we ended up and making this world that's comfortable and nice and convenient and you know, much like our world, but just a heightened version of our world where everything is getting nicer as the years go and there's more design and there's more convenience and our technology is making things easier, but uh, there's still this loneliness and longing. To accompany the film's minimalistic tone, Spike Jones tapped Owen Pallet and Arcade Fire to score the film's soundtrack, and they did not disappoint. The score's ambient minimalism creates a quietly sensual tone and sound for the album. The choice to really saturate the film with scenes with nothing but the score playing gives a sense of peace and loneliness within both the characters on screen and the viewer. Most of the songs don't even use more than two instruments. Some of the best songs on the album only use the piano.
Arcade Fire's Wynn Butler shared with Flood Magazine, quote, There is a mysterious alchemy in the way sound and picture work together, notes and moods shifting and reacting to one another like a kaleidoscope, and even in the absence of visuals, the emotional landscape still remains. We hope you have a moment of stillness to get lost in the music as we did writing and recording it. And clearly that stillness that they attempted to capture had been felt. In fact, it was nominated in the 2014 Oscars for Best Original Score, as well as Karen O's Moon Song for Best Original Song. And all this is thanks to the mind of Spike Jones himself, creating a balanced and nuanced take of romance in the sci-fi genre. A well-crafted piece of art on all fronts, from direction, to the performances, to the visuals, and to the score. As if it felt more than another entry to his filmography, and rather to be viewed as a passion project. As the years went by, the similarities in tone, story, and atmosphere have been compared to the film Lost Translation, which had been written and directed by Sofia Coppola. But these aren't just similarities in both films, rather different perspectives of a singular story. When writing Lost in Translation, she had been having marital problems with husband Spike Jones, and upon the film's release in September of 2003, critics had noted similarities in the relationship portrayed in the film to Coppola and Jones' relationship at the time. She said, quote, It had been rough being apart so much, and the relationship was based on what I was going through at the time. I didn't marry the right person. I think I had doubts, but I didn't listen to them before I was young. And ten years after the release of Lost in Translation, we have her. If Lost in Translation was a ballad about Sophia's isolation and miscommunication with Spike, her is the response to the divorce that soon followed afterwards, and the evolution of disconnectivity in an ever-communicating world. And it's poetic in a way that it's to be said that both films are sibling films to each other. Both had casted Scarlett Johansson as a female lead. Both films were critically acclaimed. Both directors were Oscar nominated for the film. Both were Oscar winners for the film. And both won it for Best Original Screenplay. It's to be said that a film is great if you can evoke emotions in every viewing, and that you could feel what the director is wanting to convey to you through both your eyes and your ears. And through Spike Jones's experience, we're brought in a type of atmosphere and story that he can only tell. <laughs>